Hey guys, in my last video about the recent 30-year treasury bond auction with weak demand, there was a lot of articles about it and there was a lot of bond jargon in there that is very confusing. And so in this video, I wanna show you exactly how the treasury bond auctions work, how you get the price that you get, and what all that jargon really means so that you can understand in the future whether there is weaker demand for these bond auctions or not, if you wanna invest or not. Now, if you go to the Treasury Direct website to see their explanation of how the auction works, there is a lot left out. So I'm gonna go through all the details using graphics so you can really understand it. So let's get started. Okay, so some people worry that when they put in their non-competitive bid, meaning the regular retail people, not the primary dealers or anything like that, they don't know what the interest rate is going to be before the auction happens. And so a lot of people are worried that they might get a bad price or something like that. Now, that's the case in stocks. When you put in a market order, you might get a really bad price. But actually, in the treasury bond auctions, it does not matter because you get the best price that everybody else gets. And so in this example, I'm gonna use the numbers roughly from that 30 year treasury bond auction on November 9th for about $24 billion. A non-competitive bidder is you or me that logs into Treasury Direct or goes through Fidelity or Vanguard or whatever and says, I wanna buy some bonds in this upcoming auction. And so you say, I want 10 bonds or whatever, and you put that order in. You don't know what the interest rate is gonna be yet, but you say, I want 10 of these 30-year bonds, right? So they collect all of these orders. And in this last auction of $24 billion, the non-competitive bidders was only about $89 million worth. So here is the 89, these are in millions of dollars, and this is the cumulative amount of all the orders, non-competitive and competitive. So this is the different levels of all the bids of the competitive bidders. I'm gonna call them the pros, right? So at this level, the pros put in a thousand million, which is a billion dollars worth, saying, I want these 30-year bonds and I'm willing to take an interest rate of 4.557 or higher, right? So these are the higher priced bids. The lower the interest rate you're willing to accept means the higher price you're willing to pay. And going all the way down with the higher interest rates is basically the lower price bids. You're saying I demand 4.8% for my money on these bonds, otherwise they're not worth it to me. Right. And this guy's saying, I demand 4.75% or better. Otherwise, I don't want them. So the way the treasury auction works is it's a Dutch auction. And so they start with the best price and go all the way down to the worst price until they get the amount of money that they were seeking. So at this level, there's a billion dollars worth. Right. So cumulatively, the 89 plus the billion is 1.089 billion. Right, the next level 4.612, these people want two and a half billion dollars worth with at least this interest rate, right? So they say, okay, these guys are good. These guys are good. These guys are good. They're all getting their orders. So far, we're up to 3.5 billion. The next guys want 4.2 billion of at least 4.65% interest rate. That's good, we'll take them. We're up to 7.7 .7 billion. The next guys are looking to get 5.9 billion. They want an interest rate of at least 4.712. We'll add them along as well. We're up to 13.6. Next guys, 6.3 billion. They want at least 4.75, right? Now we're almost at 20 billion. We need to get 24 billion for this auction, right? So the next guy, and these are not individual bidders. It could be, it could be one bidder. It could be 10 bidders. It could be more than that. I don't know. But the total amount at this level is 15.3 billion that they want. And they won't take less than an interest rate of 4.769, right? So the total, if they took these bidders would bring them to 35 billion, but they only need 24 billion. So they say, okay, well, we only need about 4 billion of this 15.3 billion. So this is the stop 
price, right? Meaning this is where the auction stops. They keep going to higher and higher interest rates until they get the full amount that they need and they stop here and they say, okay, the bond is going to be 4.769%. These guys want 15.3 billion, but we don't need all of that. We just need 4 billion. So they are all going to get so they are all going to get a portion of their orders filled. They have 20 billion here, they only need 4 billion more. So there's 15 here. So it's about 25%. So if you put in an order for 100 million, you're only going to get filled on 25 million at that at this level. Everybody else is going to get everything they asked for except for these last people here. And these people that say, hey, I won't take anything less than 4.8%, well, they're out of luck because all the other orders got filled up to the level that they need. These guys were asking too much, so they get nothing. And so the way they actually price the coupon on the bond, they're not going to price 4.769. They do it in one-eighths of a percentage point. And so they don't go over, they go under. So if it's 4.769, they say, okay, the bond is going to be 4.75 and we're going to price it a little lower than 100. So the combination of those two, the 4.75 coupon plus a little bit lower price is going to give you 4.769. Now, here's the kicker. Even though these are the guys that demanded 4.769 and these guys said i'll take less and and you as a non-competitive bidder say i'll take whatever you give me everybody that got some here and everybody here 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 and here are all getting the highest yield that these guys got so this is a really good auction for everybody involved because you can bid some crazy price and say, hey, I'll even take 4%, right? But if the last bid or the stop price is 4.769, that's the interest rate that everybody gets that was accepted in their bids. So all of these people get 100% of their bids filled and these people get 25% of their bids filled, but everybody gets a total of 4.769 interest rate on their bonds. So now that you see how the auction actually works, now I'm going to go into some of the terms that they use, like when issued, the snap price, a tail, a stop through, and show you what those mean and why an auction is bad or good based on the statistics of what happened during that auction. Now, although that auction was on November 9th, it was announced on November 1st. And so dealers and their private buyers were able to transact that bond before the auction even happened. And that's called the when issued market, meaning they make the deals to buy and sell, but they can't deliver it yet. They have to wait until it's actually issued. One way you can think of it is when Girl Scouts sell you Girl Scout cookies, you give them the money, but they don't give you the cookies until they take all the orders and like a month later they come and deliver them to you. That's kind of when issued. And so it's seen as a positive thing because it gives the market some time to get indications of interest from buyers, dealers, dealers to dealers. And so it is a little bit like how analysts, when they project the consensus earnings for, say, Apple, let's say it's 50 cents a share because they polled uh, 30 different analysts and that average is actually where usually the earnings actually end up. So when the analysts are right on the money, the stock doesn't really do anything. But if the analysts are really wrong, either either the earnings are way higher than the estimate or way lower than the estimate, that's when the stock really moves, right? When the analysts are completely blindsided. And this is kind of what happened here with the 30-year treasury bond. So let's look at a chart explaining that. So before we look at the chart, let's look at the announcement for this auction. The date of the announcement is November 1st. The date of the auction is November 9th. And then the actual issue date is November 15th. And so it was $24 billion, right? Interest rate determined at the auction. 
So these are the results of the non-competitive bidders for the auction, only 89 million out of $24 billion. So they are tiny. So here are the treasury auction results. So the interest rate that's stated on the face of the bond is four and three quarters percent, but the high yield is 4.769. And so because of that, the price you pay for this bond is under 100 because you're only getting 4.75%. And so the little discount you pay here makes up the difference so that you get a total of 4.769, the high yield that everybody gets who got some allotted bonds. Now you see the competitive bidders tendered $53 billion worth, but only like 24 billion was accepted. So that's how they kind of tell some of the strength of the auction, right? Divide 53 by 24, and it's like 2.2 something. That is the bid to cover ratio, meaning for every dollar of bond that they were looking to sell, how many bidders were there? Well, in this case, there was like $2.2 for every dollar worth they were trying to sell. So how do the dealers that trade before this thing actually gets auctioned off in the when issued market, how do they know where to buy and sell this thing? Well, for one, there's other 30 year bonds already trading. So this is the 30 year bond index, right? On November 1st, it was trading at 4.975%, then went to 4.82, then 4.752, fell as low as 4.65, but then on the auction day, it went up to 4.77. So obviously they use this kind of as a guide to what they're looking to sell to other people or buy it from before this thing actually gets auctioned off. So I made my own graph of what this looks like. November 1st is the announcement date. November 9th is the actual auction date, right? So during all of these trading days here, this thing is trading in the when issued market. Okay, so here are the interest rates for the 30-year bond index. The higher the interest rate on the index it goes, that means the lower the price of the bond and vice versa. As the interest rate goes lower, that means the prices of the bonds are going higher. So starting on November 1st, when they announced this auction, it was almost like 5% interest rate. And as it went down, that means that the bond price rallied to lower interest rates and it got all the way around 4.7 or something like that. This is all trading in the when issued market. So these trading days before the auction happened here on November 9th. And so what is expected, kind of like how stock analysts have a consensus for earnings, that this was the very last price before the auction. It should continue right around that price. But that didn't happen. And it had a huge 5.3 basis point jump for the final auction price. And so this is what everybody is worried about, that it shows weak demand because the bidders demanded a much higher interest rate than what the when issued market was trading at. So this is the snap price in the when issued market, meaning the when issued market, the very last price before the auction happens, that is the snap price. And so if there's a big jump between the snap price and the auction interest rate, either higher or lower. If it's higher, they call it a tail, like a fat tail distribution on a bell curve graph. So this indicates weaker demand, meaning bidders are demanding a higher interest rate than what was going on in the when issued market. The opposite of a tail or a negative tail is called stopped through, right? So if the snap ended up here, but the auction results ended up with an even lower interest rate, like over here or something like that, that would mean even better demand than this indicated. So lower than the snap price, lower interest rate than the snap price on the auction means stronger demand, higher interest rate than the snap price on the auction means weaker demand. And if it is the same level or almost the same level 
as the snap price and the auction interest rate, they say that it is on the screws. And where the hell does that come from? Apparently, they used to screw on a little metal plate on the face of the golf club, on the wooden golf club, and they used screws to screw it into the wood. And that was like right dead center where you want to hit the ball. So if you hit it right on the screws, you got a lot of power and you got a very long shot so they would say you hit it on the screws if you hit a really nice long shot and they also use that for baseball terms also when you hit it right in the perfect spot on the bat so basically kind of dead center that's called on the screws all right so tail is a higher interest rate which is weaker demand stop through a lower interest rate which is better demand and on the screws is exactly as estimated by the when issued market. So I hope you have a good understanding now of how the treasury market works. And you see that you actually get the same best price as the big guys do. And hopefully now you can understand some of the jargon that they talk about and see exactly what they mean when they say, when issued and snap and tail and stop through and the stop price and all of that stuff. So you're not confused when you read these articles, because if you're not sitting on a bond trading desk or something like that, it is very difficult to understand what they're talking about. So hopefully you have a better understanding after watching this video. Thanks for watching guys.